In today's video, we're going to be going over the summertime analogs. From June to August, we're going to be predicting kind of what history will tell us this upcoming summer will likely be like. And I can tell you right now that things look extremely hot, maybe even record-breaking hot, based on this historical data that we're going to be going over today. We will be also taking a look at what the precipitation will look like, but it does vary quite a bit from year to year, as we will see. Now, you may be curious what we use to collect this data, and it's really this right here, and this is the historic ENSO data, and that's for El Nino, La Nina, and we use the past 50 years worth of data to find years similar to this one, uh, and that's what we're going to be going over today. So year number one on the temperature anomalies is going to be 1983. Primarily, we were looking for years where we were in an El Nino, and we were heading into a La Nina over the course of that summer and fall time. So if that transition happened a little bit too early, uh, we disregarded those. We looked for ones that transitioned sometime over the summer or fall months, and that seems pretty on par with what we expect this year. So these should be pretty close to what we're seeing uh, on this year of 2024. And you see there's this warm area, especially in the north central states here, the Great Lakes states down through the Ohio Valley. On this particular year, we had a very strong negative PNA look out west, as you can see, for a lot of Western Canada and Western United States. And this did actually trickle in through a lot of the Gulf states and offshore of the East Coast. Let's take a look at our next anomaly, and this one's going to be for 1995, and we moved about 10 plus years forward. And we once again on this year had that negative PNA out west, this time even stronger, and the warmer temperatures, especially for the north central and northeastern states. So a very similar anomaly. And we even had uh, these colder temperatures for the south central and gulf states as well as the southeast. So very, very similar to that previous one. Let's keep going, though. And by the way, we will take a look at the combined results at the end. So keep that in mind as well. The next one is 1998. And this is the first one that looks quite a bit different. Uh, for one thing, on this particular year, uh, we didn't have that strong negative PNA. We actually had a pretty mixed bag as there's some warmer temperatures up here in Canada, some cooler temperatures here over some of the Rockies. Uh, definitely wasn't a clean slate you know, positive or negative PNA whatsoever. Uh, we did have warmer temperatures, but this time around it was over the Gulf states and the South Central states, and we had some cooler temperatures over the Mid-Atlantic and Northeast. So this year, it kind of stands out as one uh, that in particular looks very different from the rest, uh, but we will keep going. And as we take a look here at 2005, which is our next analog, this one we get right back into that kind of negative PNA look a little bit more east-based with this, but still same story. This negative PNA encourages the warm temperatures into the east, and we once again get a really, really hot summer here on another um, analog year, which is going to be this 2005 summer. Let's keep going, and our next one is 2007, just two years later. We had quite a bit of warm temperatures here in the east, but also over the west with actually some cooler temperatures over the south central states is the primary feature there. So again, another little bit of a different one here. And you can't expect all of these to look exactly identical either, by the way. And, and that's definitely the hardest part is if it if they all looked identical after, you know, an El Nino and we're heading into a La Nina, then it would be so easy to forecast the upcoming season. And it just doesn't work that way because there's so many variables. But we're trying to find all the simula similarities that we can here that's the biggest focus uh, as we move forward. And as we take a look at 2010, this is when we get really, really torchy with it, guys. This is when we start to see some really warm temperatures show up in the east. And it's mostly due to a lot of these colder temperatures, not only onshore for the United States, but also offshore for areas offshore of Canada, uh, the western United States, and even Mexico here. These cooler temperatures force a lot of warmth to surge into the eastern states, and we see that happening here. These are strongly above average temperatures. We're talking maybe two degrees above average here on an entire three month season, which is extreme uh, to say the least. And that's Celsius, by the way, not even Fahrenheit. So it means even more. This was a true torch of a summer. Very, very hot here in the east. We're going to see another one like that here in our next analog year, which is 2016. And this is actually our final one as well. This was a hot year overall. 
So it's kind of tough to differentiate where the cooler and warmer temperatures were because almost everywhere was warmer. But we can tell there's truly a hot spot over the eastern states here once again. And a little bit more neutral over the west, although it's still quite warm, I would say. And once we put all of these temperature analogs together, this is pretty much what we come up with. And this is a large sample size. This is every single year since 1950 that draws similarities to this year as far as the ENSO is concerned. So I spent a lot of time doing this. And I did this for last summer where we had a cooler summer. Uh, and that actually ended up being quite accurate as well. So uh, definitely these analogs play a huge role in, in what forecasters should be doing. Um, a lot of times we rely too heavily on models, I feel like. And a lot of times history can tell us what we really, really need to know. Um, and I'm obviously, as we move forward and closer to summer, going to start implementing some models as far as what I'm thinking for the upcoming summer. Um, however, I think history is a big, big piece of it, maybe even bigger than any sort of model could be. Now, we do see that over the course of these, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven summers, uh, they did average having a negative PNA out west. And that stands for Pacific North American Oscillation, by the way, guys. And all that means is in its negative phase, there's colder temperatures out here. In its positive phase, there would be warmer temperatures. So definitely very, very simple stuff. And the opposite happens east of that area. So in this case, we have a negative PNA. Expect positive temperatures over the east. Sure enough, that's what we see. The hottest area being the Ohio Valley up through the Great Lakes, maybe even the Midwest here. Um, but really, the entire eastern states are dealing with a much warmer than normal summer. Very, very hot on a seven-day sample size. That's huge. Now, for precipitation, like I hinted at earlier, it really jumps all over the place. So for the first year here, 1983, we saw some below average precipitation here for some of the Ohio Valley into the Mid-Atlantic but much more above average for the Gulf Coast here. Another thing I want us to pay attention to is the tropics here. So areas like here um, from the MDR, which stands for Main Development Region, through the Caribbean, through the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, that's definitely an area to watch. I'm going to try changing my color here. Let's see if I can... It's going to be tough because there's so many colors on screen right now. I might use this. Let's see how this works. Yeah, that'll be a little bit better. But your tropics here... Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the next one, which is that 1995 one. And we actually saw quite a bit more activity from the tropics on this particular year. Uh, we could tell that a lot of this uh, was coming in the form of this. So I bet we had some sort of tropical activity, especially along the southeast coast here. Perhaps not, but this seems apparent to me that there likely was. Um, and overall, a lot of the east was above average precipitation on this particular summer. 1998, our next analog, this one was a lot quieter along the Gulf Coast and the Southeast in general. Although it does look like we did have some tropical activity, it just stayed mostly in the Southern Caribbean or offshore of the Southeast, so it just happened to miss these areas. A lot of our activity in the lower 48 was reserved for the Rockies and through the Northern Plains and Midwest. For 2005 here, we get a lot more of that tropical activity. Uh, this was a crazy hurricane season, so no surprise there. But we can tell that there was um, some hurricanes taking aim, obviously, uh, and tropical activity overall at the southeast states and Gulf states here from this tropical uh, area. This was one of the worst hurricane seasons of all time. Uh, a little bit drier here for the east coast and a little bit drier down here for Mexico and some of the Texas coast. But overall, I almost said Texas toast. Uh, as we see for a lot of the eastern states here, uh, overall and central states, we had above average activity. Uh, 2007 here, pretty much the opposite. We see that some of the Gulf and Southeast coasts were quieter, but a lot of Texas and the Plains were above average. So we've gone over, over a couple of them. We're going to be going over a couple more here, but you're probably picking up on the trend uh, that this is going to be really, really hard to use for precipitation uh, and that it jumps all over the place and overall temperatures are a lot easier to predict. If you assumed all of those things, then you're absolutely correct. The temperature pattern is a lot more simple than these precipitation patterns, which can be changed by a single storm, uh, which obviously cannot be predicted very far out. So super, super challenging. Let's take a look at 2010 here, and it actually looks pretty similar to 2007. A lot of your central states seeing more of this activity. And then a lot quieter along the East Coast. As we take a look here at our final analog, 2016. And this one was a little bit less all over the place. But we did see some above average activity here for the central states again. 
East Coast a little bit quieter. So there is a couple of trends we could pick up on here and I think could be useful. Uh, and, and especially once we take a look at the all put together forecast here uh, that history tells us, I think that uh, the central states seeing above average precipitation seems likely, at least according to these analogs. Um, and the East Coast, it seems like there's a good chance we're going to be a little bit quieter than what is typical. But again, one tropical system could throw all of this off. Let's say uh, that there is, God forbid, some sort of tropical storm or hurricane that comes up the East Coast. All of a sudden, everybody gets 5 to 10 inches of precipitation from that storm, and they're above average. So anything can throw it off. But assuming that no crazy storms like that happen, it seems more likely that the central states see above average uh, precipitation and the east coast sees a little bit less than what's typical with the west coast being nearly average which for them is very little precipitation anyway guys i hope this video was interesting to you guys let me know in the comments if you liked it i did quite a few of these last year and you guys ate it up so i'm hoping that you guys enjoy this one as well be sure to subscribe as we do upload every single day and we actually have a lot more of these on the way as we're going to begin talking about the fall and winter eventually here obviously the winter is going to be quite a few months away from talking about it but we're going to start really talking about the summer and fall here over the coming month or two so be on the lookout for those videos you can even hit the bell icon for those notifications so you never miss one like the video if you did enjoy it leave a comment down below and i'll see you guys in the next video